Okay, so we're back. We're on floor two of my introductory video here for uh, new players of Shattered Pixel Dungeon. This is floor two of the first dungeon stage. Um, the, first, the first floor is really very easy. It gives you exactly enough experience to get to level two. Uh, this floor here will have some differences. It'll have some, you know, hidden rooms where the first floor did not have anything hidden. Um, I don't know if it has hidden traps. I can't remember if uh, I'll see hidden traps, but I don't think we see those until a little lower in the dungeon. Yeah, maybe it does. I think it does, actually. So, um, so I have to watch out for hidden things. Just uh, a little stroll through here. Okay, that's a marsupial rat. I can hit him with a stone, wake him up. And hit him. Oh, gone through the door and hit him, but it didn't do very much damage. I always back up through the doors. One, there you go. Okay, that's an arcane stylus in my inventory here. This uh, this uh, this lets me write a glyph on my armor, which enchants it. Um, I'm not going to do that yet because there's a there's a uh, talent that I want to get before I use any of that. A tier two talent once I get to level um, seven, I think. Okay, that rat's awake now. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll hit him with a stone. I don't like to wear out my stones early on because then I might have nothing to throw to wake anybody up. You can't throw any regular items to wake up a mob, so I'll just wait for this guy here and save my stone. Oh, there he is. Okay. Aha! There, see, that was a hidden trap. This is a gas trap. Toxic gas trap. If I had stepped on that, it would have made a cloud of toxic gas that uh, that does a lot of damage, actually. Now I know where it is. I can potentially use it. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to use it just to demonstrate. Uh, or maybe not. It's a little bit close, isn't it? Yeah, now he's walking through the cloud of gas. That's hurting him. Oh, there's the ghost. Okay, so this is the sad ghost. Sad ghost um, has a quest for me. The quest is uh, to immediately fight uh, like a mini boss. Uh, I'm not going to talk to the sad ghost yet because as soon as I do, I get that quest, and then the mini boss comes. And I haven't explored this dungeon level, and I haven't killed all of the um, the respawn mobs there. That puts me at a disadvantage. I like to have a, a nice, clear, and well-known terrain to fight the mini-boss. So I'm just going to let that sad ghost pass and not talk. Here's the knoll. Okay, get that money. If you leave uh, objects in a door, the door doesn't close. And that means that you don't have the ability to... It means you don't have the ability to use it for the element of surprise anymore. Snake. Walk through here. See how I walk down here? If another enemy goes through, and you can see, do you see the, how this door is open when this door is not? This is a little trick. Um, you can see doors open on the map even though you don't have visibility. Even though you, I can't see this door, I can still see the door opening and closing. So uh, that tells me that something is going through it. I recall that it's the sad ghost just now. Uh, there's a snake coming this way. If something else were to walk through this door while I'm waiting for this snake, uh, and I, I kill the snake, if I'm on this side, if I'm above the door, um, there's a better chance that whatever it is will be able, will be coming from this angle and see me, and then um, unless I go back and close the door, I'm not going to have the element of surprise. But if I'm down here, something that comes through is going to walk probably this way and then end up here and going up. More likely, anyway. Uh, and then, even if the door is open, whatever mob is there is going to is going to see me at the last minute, and then I get the element of surprise. So I'm just going to wait for the snake here. By a snake. There, see, that knoll could very well have come through. The knoll's seen me through the ghost, but um, now I got to wait here. I'm going to go back down again. There's a good chance it'll get confused. Yeah. Yep, yeah, okay, that mill's gone around the other way because it could have bathed me. Uh, Alright, so back up to the door here. Wait, there. 
Oh. There's a snake there. Okay, just wake the snake, walk back through, serve my rocks. Snake. With a piece of food. And a key. So this room appears to be a dead end, which is unusual. I'll tell you. Um, used to be that uh, all the dungeon rooms were always in a ring on every level. Uh, I've seen ones that aren't these days. Uh, I think the room generation has been tweaked a bit and made a bit more varied, but for the most part, it's still this ring pattern. So if you get to a room like this that's kind of on the path and it doesn't go anywhere, there's almost certainly a hidden door. So I'm going to search for a hidden door. Nothing there. I'm going to move down. Huh. Nothing there either. There's going to be nothing there because those are uh, those wall decorations that are in the way. Those are, I guess, uh, sewer pipes on this level. Hmm. Huh. Does it seem to anybody else that this is actually a dead end? Maybe my advice is no good? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, in this room here, check out all the grass, see if there's any dew or seeds, and not wake any of the monsters on this next dungeon level. But get all the goodies that are hiding in the grass, because they might be useful to me earlier. Alright. Back up. That's very weird. Um, I need to wait for this ghost to get out of the way anyway, I think. Oh, wait. Oh, that was silly. Oh, wait, there is a hidden door. Okay, okay, good. Okay. Oh, uh, this is a locked door, so there's, there's like, uh, there's probably something good in this room here. I happen to have picked up a key. I don't know if you can see this key here. I've got the iron key. Um, keys are good for any door on the level that you picked them up on. So I'm gonna open this door. Have a little look. Ooh, it's the alchemy room. It's a stone I just picked up. It's got an ability of some kind. I think it was a stone of sleep. If I throw that... It's in my... Stone's here. This is a uh, stone of intuition, which I can use to um, uh, tell me if a guess is right about what what unidentified object... Um, what, what its actual identity is. Uh, and if, uh, if I guess correctly, I think I get to keep the stone. Yeah. Um, this one is a stone of deep sleep. I can put an enemy to sleep by throwing the stone at the enemy. Um, they can also be used for other things. Uh, like upgrading scrolls or whatever. Do I have any scrolls to upgrade? I do not. So, um... Can I do any worthwhile alchemy? I've only got two seeds. If I had three seeds, I could put them together and make a potion. Um, and the color of the seeds influences the probability of what kind of potion it's going to be. Um, I don't have anything worthwhile to do with the alchemy pot at the moment, so I'm just going to leave. And keep exploring. Okay, this guy's not surprised. See, he's been alarmed. I'm going to step back behind the pillar. Hit him. Step back behind the pillar. And hit him. Step back behind the pillar. And hit him. See how that works? I'm going to chase you around a pillar, he can't win. Well, that's not true. He can still hit you, but uh, um, he's hitting you with an armor uh, an armor penalty, so you have armor uh, and, and the ability to dodge. And uh, he only has his armor. No ability to dodge. So, better to do it that way. I'm going to... Ooh, this guy's asleep. There you go. All right, so I've got two ways I can go here. This path up here seems to lead up here, so that there's a chance that this is a safer route. It's not explored, but it's the nearest door, and I don't want to waste time trailing him all the way down here. So I'm gonna. There we go. And oh man, <sighs> I'm just gonna duke it out with him right here because I don't want to spend too much of my time wandering around the dungeon because I'm hungry right now, you see. That means that uh, the more I, more time I waste not eating, the more health I lose. But you'll notice that I'm not eating yet. I'm not eating yet. Oh, I scroll. I'm not eating yet because uh, if I do, I gain a little bit of health back, don't I? 
No, I didn't take that uh, talent. That'd be that'd be this one. Um, but I start gaining health again, and I want to wait until I've got a good amount of health to gain before I eat, because otherwise, if I if uh, if I gain so much health that it um, that it gets to full and I'm still fed. I'm wasting all the, the health points that I could potentially be, you know, using to, to keep my, my health up. Right? It kind of cuts off. This is a little strategy I, I use to, to make sure that um, I'm not... Uh, I'm, not uh, I'm not wasting resources. Resource management is a big part of this game. And health is a resource. And hunger is a resource. Uh, and... Um, wand charges, which we haven't seen yet, are a resource. There we go. Gained a level. Gained a skill point. So what am I going to take? Um, do I want to... I think I'll take... I'm going to have five total skill points. I'm going to take one level of the hardy meal at least here. Chest here. Well, well, this guy. I'm gonna. This time, I'm not gonna go back this way. I'm gonna go this way because I'll, I'll be closer to this other door to drag him through, and then I'll be able to come back up around. Three doors in close proximity, like this, is a good way to get a lot of free hits. All right, wait for him here. Smack in the face. Back up here. Back down here. Now you see he's followed me there, so he's going to be around the corner. Even if the door were to stay open for one reason or another, I'd be in better shape. Um, or smack in the face. Good. Gold. Knowles only drop gold, as far as I know. All right. This dungeon is uh, explored, except for any hidden rooms. I'm gonna look for hidden rooms now. Nothing there. Make up there. I don't want to waste too much time doing this, um, but you also don't want to miss any bonuses. Aha! Here's one! And it's another alchemy room, which is convenient because I have some alchemy to do. Okay, so this scroll is not identified. A, a thing you can do, you want to identify your potions and scrolls ideally as quickly as you can. Um, so that you're you're not uh, sitting on something that's, that could potentially save you in a bad situation. Uh, however, reading the scrolls to identify them, um, some scrolls can have a bad effect on you. Uh, for example, a summoning scroll can uh, not a summoning scroll, a um, scroll of rage. What do they call it now? There's a there's a, a scroll that will alarm all the enemies in the dungeon and have them all run toward you. Um, that can be not an ideal scroll to read, depending on what the level looks like. Um, a good way to identify a scroll is to put it in the alchemy pot, turn it into stones. Scrolls each turn into a predictable type of stone, depending on what the scroll was. So by turning an unidentified scroll into stones, this is a stone of shock, which I can't remember what scroll that correlates with, but um, anyway. The scroll's identified now. If I get another scroll like that, I'll know exactly what it is, even though I can't remember which one is which. And I can't um, look at the... Oh, maybe I can. Yes, okay. Uh, apparently I picked up the Creating Rune Stones page. That was the other green page you saw me pick up in the, um, in the other alchemy room. These green pages are for when you haven't played through the game yet. Every page gives you uh, a bit more of like a knowledge base of things going on in the game. So, Creating Rune Stones... Looks like the stone I created, which one was it? It was the Stone of Shock. So that was the recharging. Scroll of Recharging gave me a Stone of Shock. So that was uh, the, sto the Scroll of Recharging. Retri uh, it uh, recharges your wands. Stone of Shock um, shocks an enemy when you throw it. I'm a warrior and I'm not using any wands and it's probably not that important that I had a Scroll of Recharging. So I'm not too worried. Alright, anything else I can do here? Do I have enough seeds yet? I've got three seeds, I can make, um... I can make another potion. I can't identify the potions that way. The potions don't turn into anything, um, correlated, so... 
I'm just going to end up with another potion here. Um, yep, I've just got another potion that's not identified. I could start drinking potions to try to identify them, but that can be dangerous, depending on what's going on around me. Um, here this level, so it's not so dangerous. I am going to eat some of this food here. Before I go waste any more time, because I'm already at, like, hmm, less than two-thirds health. I'm going to drink this potion, because I've got two of them. That's a potion of uh, frost. I gotta be careful because um, being uh, chilled is okay, but getting frozen, if you're standing in water, it's especially dangerous. Um, I, I like to stand in water until I've identified the, the scroll of uh, flame, or the, sorry, the potion of flame, because uh, it'll set me on fire and I won't be able to put myself out if I'm not in water and that can burn up my scrolls, any scrolls that I'm carrying, which I don't have any, so I'm not too worried about that right now, but I'll lose hit points. Um, the Potion of Frost, if I freeze, if I'm standing in water especially, I can freeze. And when I freeze, my potions freeze and explode, right? There's a chance of that happening and I can lose a potion. And some of these potions are really valuable. Like, uh, um, the Potion of Strength will never do that. It'll never freeze. But a Potion of Experience will. A potion of Experience gives you a whole other level of experience. Like, you you just gain a level. So I'm, I don't want to waste that. So I'm going to drink Jade Potion here. That's a potion of strength. Good. Okay, I needed that. That means I'm up to 11 strength now. Uh, there. And there's going to be two of those per dungeon stage. So if you haven't found both of them uh, in a given dungeon stage, you got to go back and get them because um, it's the only way to gain strength in the game. I'm going to drink the turquoise potion. You found... No, sorry, I feel energetic. Okay, so that's a potion of um, speed. I drank this Bistra potion. That turned me invisible, so now I'm fast and invisible, like a ninja. Aha! Which means I can sneak attack this guy. And there's the ghost. I'm gonna talk to the ghost now. Oh, it's the fetid rat. Okay. Yeah, depending on what level the ghost appears on uh, within the stage one, it'll be a different mini boss. The uh, level two. Ghost gives you the fetid rat, who's this um, rat, this guy here. Uh, and this rat, I'm just gonna, yeah, so this rat, this rat, uh, he makes this cloud of stink around him that uh, that will knock you out if, uh, if you are on a square with it going. Um, but it expands in like a circle, but it's a pixelated circle. So the first, the first uh, cloud is like a plus sign. So um, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna try to stay on one of his corners, but I also have to try to stay in water because he's going to hit me with uh, uh, this um, uh, caustic, this caustic goo that'll burn me. And if I'm in water, it'll wash off. But if I'm not in water, it won't. And I'll take damage every turn. And if I take damage every turn, and I can't move because I've, I've been knocked out by this cloud of stink, it just gets free shots that are augmented by the Caustic Ooze, which is super dangerous. So I'm going to try to stay on the right side of this rat. How do I do that? It's the best way. It's going to come right at me here. Um, hmm. Walk this way. This way. There we go. There's another rat there. Crap. Um, he's gonna get free shots if I get knocked out, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take out this other rat. There, see, it's a caustic ooze, but it washed right off. All right. So now I'm gonna hit this rat here. Yeah. See, now I got paralyzed. I can hit again. There we go. All right. That wasn't too bad. Now I'll just wait for the cloud to disappear before I go get my rocks. It's just wait enough for the cloud to disperse. There we go. And talk to the talk to the ghost. Now the ghost is going to give me a uh, an enchanted weapon, probably an enchanted weapon. It's usually it's usually a good weapon and usually good armor that the that the ghost gives me. Um, what do I need more? I'm going to click away from this because I don't need to I don't need to take the reward just yet. What I'm going to do is check my... Oops, that's my uh, 
character. Heck, I've already got some armor here, but I've got the starting sword. There's a chance that this armor is is uh, cursed, and I don't have a remove curse scroll. But there's also a chance that it's not. But what I know is that I don't have any. I don't have any good weapons. I've just got my starting weapon. And if this is not cursed armor, and I put it on, and I identify it, I can move my seal over to it and enchant it at least to level 1. So I think what I need more to fight the level 1 mini-boss, or level 1 uh, end boss rather, is... I think what I need is a, a sword. So I'm going to take the sword. Firm. But I can probably use this sword right away. Oh, I can't because it's not enchanted. What a rip-off. And... I fulfilled your quest of vengeance and all you gave me is a regular sword? Ah. Okay, well, anyway, I guess I'll have to wait until I've got enough strength to use it. It's still a better sword than my, uh... It's still a better sword than the, than the, uh, the, the worn short sword that you start with, but... Man, I was hoping. Okay, I'm gonna search here. I've got a technique that I use to search. I don't know if this actually works. Whoa. Okay, I found that. That's a lightning trap. Um... I like to search at the corners and then walk along the, the wall because I think, I'm not certain, but I think the uh, the search, um, after you search it, it, uh, it makes it slightly more likely that you're going to find hidden things for a, a while after. I think, oh, I'm down to one stone, aren't I? But I'm only on level two here. I hope I find a throwing weapon. Um, I, I do want to soften this guy up before he gets to me, because I'm not... There we go. Okay, so I'm going to wait for him to come to me, because there's only one space between us. Oh, there we go. Alright. Whoa, another lightning trap. And it's right beside water. This one, uh, if it triggers, the whole water electrifies. Which is a thing you can do. You can throw something, any item, at the, um, at the trap. Preferably one that doesn't break. Throw a weapon at the lightning trap and anything that's uh, on or around the water will get electrified and stunned. That's a good thing to keep around, not that I'm probably going to use it at this level, I'm probably going to head downstairs in a sec. Alright, well... Alright, well I think that concludes... Floor 2 of this introductory walkthrough of the first stage of Shattered Pixel Dungeon. Uh, I'll be back and I'll do Floor 3.